Okay, so I've got an SD card here. Um, doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's got a basic 8 gig SD card here. And our first step is to format it in the Pixie so that we can then create a valid LUT folder and put the LUTs into here for import. Okay, so we've got a basic SD card, nothing special. I've got an 8 gig one here. Our first step is to insert it into the Pixie and format it for use. So we've inserted, we come to the menu here. I want to come up to recorder and drives. Come down to reformat drive. And I want to reformat the SD card. Continue, yes. Give it a name, which is fine. Let me do a quick copy. And okay. Come back out of our menus. Going to eject the SD card once more. So I'm going to put the SD card back in my computer and open the Explorer. You can see here we have the Pixie card and it's created a LUTs folder here as part of the formatting process but if it hasn't created it for any reason you can create a folder with the name LUTs, L-U-T with a small s uh, and then that's where we will apply our LUT or drag our LUT. So we'll come over to the desktop here, we'll see the LUT that we created earlier I'm going to drag it over to the LUTs folder. Verify that it's there, which it is. And I'm going to eject the SD card. Okay, so I'm going to take the SD card out. I'm going to plug it in this side of the Pixie here. And if, if you don't have an SD card, that's okay. You can use your speed drive just the same way. You format the speed drive. It creates a lot forward just the same. You can plug your speed drive into any USB port, which is fantastic uh, without any adapters and put the lot in the speed drive and it will show up the same way. You can bring it into the folder and you can store as many lots as you want and you have four slots to store it in. Okay, so we've inserted the SD card now, so we want to apply the LUT. So come back into our menu system. I'm going to go to LCD monitor. And I can pick any of the four slots. I'm going to take slot one here. And you can see now the Pixie log LUT, which we created in the computer is there. So I'm going to select that. Okay, you can see it's now selected as LUT one. So I'm going to come back out of the menu system and a short press will apply the LUT for you. And to verify that you've got the correct slot, you can long press and you can see that currently we have uh, our Pixie log selected. If I wanted to select another one, uh, pick Pixie log LUT here, which is from the old one. So you can have up to four slots here. So we'll select our Pixie LUT that we created. So now we have the LUT in the Pixie, it's non-destructive, which is the best way to be, uh, because we get to see our post-LUT image, but we record the log out of the camera itself for maximum flexibility in post, because should you or a colorist want to give a different look, we haven't baked in the look as you would with a destructive system. So this is really the best system to use because you can use this both to output to a director's monitor, for example, who may or may not want to see a applied LUT. But you can also have your own system be without LUT, but the director's system with a LUT, for example. Another function that is useful for this LUT is that when recording log, for example, with the GH4 and other cameras, IRE is often clipped at the low and the high end. So a lot of the waveform monitors, etc., won't show you a clipped image because it doesn't see a plus 100 IRE. So one advantage of this LUT system is that if you've built your LUT correctly and you haven't clipped anything in the LUT, then 
your LUT will display you a linear image such that your vector scope and your false color, etc., in the Pixie will show you the final image and show you whether it's overexposed or not, which is another very useful function. So it serves several functions in that you can both see your image post LUT. Your director can see it post LUT or not if he wants. You can choose which inputs to use. And you also get to see proper post LUT exposure values for your shooting, which is extremely useful with something like the GH4 that won't always show clipping values. You can see here on the GH4 we're shooting vlog, so the image itself is very flat. Um, I've got my picking turn on for focus here, which is fine. So, but what's nice is that if you come up here to the monitor, here is the pre LUT image, and now that I've selected my LUT, if I choose it, instantly you can see that you have a beautiful, vibrant color image, which gives you all the dynamic range of the post LUT image. But this is not baked in, so we're still recording a log, but we have this LUT here now that shows the clients through their monitors and the director, etc. a nice image where the operator knows that it's still recording in log format uh, with all the quality advantages of that format intended. So I hope you've had a good learning experience here. Uh, thank you for watching. and. If you have more questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the forums. Thank you very much.